I am so excited to be here today. I was invited by St. Charles yeah. Trading in the beautiful kitchen, and I am so excited to do something very special for you today. I'm Chef Alain Robbie, and as you can see behind, we have a selection of chocolate that I will be displaying, hopefully, in the sugar pieces I'm going to do now for you. So let's get started. So here we go. We have the beautiful sugar blob, and I'm gonna be a little bit more quiet because now I gotta be my zone and I gotta work very hard. So let's go for it. What I can do is to explain you the different step. What I'm doing now is I'm pulling sugar. And that's where the name actually, pulled sugar, comes from. You see, it's very opaque and not very shiny. As I, as I keep pulling, the beautiful shine will start appearing. Now the sugar is cooked at 310 degrees. It's extremely hot and as you cool it off, then it becomes a paste and it's almost the same consistency, consistency than glass blown. When you blow glass or you pull glass. As you can see, the sugar now is changing. It's become, becoming much lighter, shiny and it's such a beautiful medium to work with. See the difference already? Look at this baby. Now, another great thing, if you have some pain in your shoulder, you can use this warm sugar. Makes you feel so great. Beautiful too. So there is a lot of advantage with the sugar. There we go. So we are ready now to proceed. Sugar pump. Scissors, and here we go. I'm not going to tell you what I do, so you can guess. All right. Fan on. And here we go. Sugar is one of the oldest culinary art. The, the court of the King Louis XIV had an amazing banquet. And in archive, you can see already some sugar work being done for the king. Okay. What I'm doing now, I'm creating a pouch. And with this pouch, I will let on and set the sugar pump and do the work which is called the blowing sugar. You have different techniques with sugar. You have the blown sugar, this one, the pulled sugar where you pull ribbon, do roses, and then you have the pour sugar where you have a form on the marble and you pour liquid sugar, let it set, and then you have a form and then you can stand up, decorate, and do all kind of fun stuff with it. Fan's gonna help me cool off and stabilize my piece when it's the right shape. Now blowing, uh, blowing sugar is the most difficult technique in the sugar work. A lot of chefs do pull sugar or poor sugar. Blowing, it's a little bit more tricky. You need a lot of training and practice, practice. Mm. 
you know, if you have a little belly, it really helps a lot to create that this is very good. If you're too skinny, it doesn't work. Now, the tricky part with this technique is if you, if you wait too long, the sugar gets hard, then it cracks, and then you have to start all over again. This is a beautiful kitchen. The space to work with that sugar is just amazing. It's great. Curve, elegant, perfect. And now the fan is gonna cool off the piece that I just made now. Now it's still soft, so if I keep blowing, I would lose the shape. You have to know the right moment when to stop. Because you can always add, but you cannot remove. So it'll be like sculpting. You remove the piece of marble, but if you break something, you cannot add it. So it's a one way. Now I'm gonna put it in my chain, and if it's harder than my body, temperature is harder, it's gonna deflate, so I gotta wait. It's gonna be perfect. Now with this piece, we're gonna have two types of work. We're gonna have the blown that you just see now, and then we're gonna have a lot of blowing of, of pulling sugar now after that. So it's two technique in one centerpiece. And again, this centerpiece is gonna be to present our beautiful chocolate. They are made right at the old chocolate kitchen. And we use actually a grand cru chocolate. And the grand cru chocolate comes from the Creole bean. And the Creole bean is actually only 3% of the whole cocoa made in the world. It's a very rare and amazing chocolate. The chocolate that we use is, um, comes a little bit from everywhere around the world. We have some chocolate that we use from Ghana from Venezuela, Ivory Coast, Grenada. Uh, the chocolate that I like the most, uh, really the finest Creole for me is the one from Venezuela. An amazing, great chocolate. So, chocolate are usually presented in a chocolate box. We're gonna do something very different, so you're gonna love it. Now this is the most critical of the whole piece. This is where my heart starts palpating. Can you hear it? No? I feel it. I have to remove this pump from this. And there is a 10% chance that by removing this, the whole thing's crack. So let's keep our finger crossed and see what happens. It's a good day. Nothing broke. Very nice. Okay. So again, patience. Now the hot hair left inside is escaping from there. So we're gonna let the vacuum hot hair go out. So it cools off not only from the outside but from the inside. Now we're gonna use my favorite toy. The blow torch. Oh, just the noise of the power fan. There we go. Ready? We're going to open it. We have to be very careful not to melt it. So you go very gentle. You let the heat go inside. You wait a little bit. Again, patience. 
When I was an apprentice, I go too fast sometimes. I got very frustrated because I could rush and I learned that patience is the key of succeeding sugar. Piece. Okay, you see what's happening here? I, I think you guess what, what's coming here. It's the fall and it, we're doing a lot. Well, keep guessing. So it's opening now. Beautiful. I'm going to fold this inside. And we're going to fold. Patience, patience, patience. That's the word you're going to hear the most. Patience. Step by step. Okay, very nice. And now we're gonna open a little bit the end. I think by now you guess what it is. Okay, it's a comic up here. All right. And the great thing with the comic up, yeah, you can use it during all the fall season, but the big show time is Thanksgiving, right? You put it on the table, you put dry fruits, truffle, all kind of goodies. And then when it's finished, you put it in a nice box in the closet somewhere and you use it the year after. I have some pieces that I made, they are almost 10 years old. Okay, now we're gonna cool it off. Now, if you wait too long, the sugar retracts and it gets very uh, brittle. And it's still kind of warm, room temperature. If I wait too long, and I would warm this up to be stick on the platter right there to, for the support. It would crack and shatter. So everything is about timing. Temperature with sugar is what's gonna make it happen or not. So now we're gonna do the welding. I'm gonna melt a little bit here, melt a bit there and do a good bounding right there. Again, the beautiful sound of the flame. And here we go, bubbly, bubbly, see the real bubble here? Very nice. You don't want to put it like this. It has to be nice and give it some height. Beautiful. Here we go. And we're going to tilt it a little bit so it goes. There we go. Very nice. We're going to stop the frame for now. And again, my friend, the fan's gonna do the job of cooling off the piece. Here we go. Now, if I would have warmed up this too much, it would have collapsed. So it's all about feel. And this, you gain this by doing it practice after practice and breaking stuff after breaking stuff. But never give up. I tell the my student, if you do sugar work, it's the most frustrating culinary art you will start in your professional life. But never ever give up. And who succeed in this art is people that never give up. Accept failure, pick up your piece and do another one. Okay, now I'm turning this piece, so the opening is right on front of the fan. And you see now I can leave it like this. Should be okay, but I don't trust. I keep holding it. Now, there is the welding between the cornucopia and the base. Doesn't look very nice. It just, so we're gonna make it look good, right? So now here we go. We're gonna do the pull sugar technique. And here we go. Perfect, very good. Now my finger, I told him, master, I do a lot of sugar, right? So I don't have too much feeling in my finger anymore. I have no feeling in my hands. 
but I do in my heart. So that's very important. Here we go. So we are ready to finish the and the base. Make it nice and clean. So here we go. This is what you call a ribbon. We're going to do actually some really exciting green ribbon on top of that. There we go. You see? Look at that. Very nice. We put it like this around. And it makes it an even better support. And it finish the cornucopia real nicely. Let's pull again. And when I pull, I'm adding some tube of air inside the sugar. And that's why you see this beautiful shine. They are actually air tubes. And it captures the light and it reflects like a mirror the light. And that's what gives you the shine, the beautiful shine of the ribbon. Now, basically, if you would do this on the moon, it wouldn't shine because there's no air. So, better do it here, right? Right. So now, you see how beautiful shiny? Let's make the most important piece for the cornucopia. We're gonna slow down the fan now. And here we go. We stretch it. And we give a And now the fan is back. Now I cannot wait that it gets completely hard because when I place it and well that it would crack and shatter. Again, timing, it's everything with sugar. Okay. Lovely, I'm ready to go. different type of blowtorch. This is a very detailed little blowtorch. It has a very fine flame. So when you do delicate work, you don't have this massive flame that may melt everything. So here we go. Now we can see already the entrance, the front of the cornucopia. Beautiful. Perfect. So that's working so far so good. And I wanted also to thank St. Charles Trading for the great sugar that I'm using now. That makes a big difference to the quality of your sugar and they really have an amazing product there. So perfect, you see how great it's working so far. So amazing. Now, Let's work on 
the green ribbon. So I'm gonna color now some of the sugar to do the green ribbon with some few drops of blue. Voila. Voila is French for that's it. I still have some French word left over in my repertory. It's amazing. Now you're gonna see it's gonna turn green. It's actually gonna be a very warm green because you have a base of orange and when you add the blue, it doesn't make a, a harsh green. It makes a very beautiful, warm green. See how it's changing now? Let's close the fan. And this green's gonna be part of, of the orange. It's all, it's a different color, but it blends, it doesn't clash. Sometimes you want color to clash because that's the effect you want. But for a fall display, it's nice when everything kind of, see, look at this. So you see behind this green, kind of an orange yellow, and that's gonna be just perfect. Okay, so let's do something that's gonna dress up the tail of the cornucopia. Here we go. Now we're gonna do the green ribbon for the tail. Let's put the fan back. One of the ribbon is done. We're gonna do another one on the other side to balance the piece. And we do the bow again for the other side. See, crack will be there.
we're going to make the decoration for the edge. The first time I did this piece, I was 20 years old, and I saw my chef, who was a master and a world champion in Europe, uh, made a cornucopia, and I say, can I stay when you leave? Can I stay in the, in the lab, the sugar lab? We call it a lab in France. And um, I would like to practice any kind of smirk and say, you just saw me doing it once. You should go you know, with me a few times before and to do it by yourself. Anyway, he left and he left me the place by myself. And I did a cornucopia that was almost as good as his, and I could not believe it. And the next day when he came, he looked at it, didn't say one word the whole day, and at the end of the day, took me in his office and said, Alan, this is really, really good. You can stay now and work with us full time, because as an apprentice, you didn't work full time. And then I tried to make it again, I could not do it. He never came good for a long time. I guess he was really like a miracle to help me stay and work with him. So here you go, it's all the pieces are done and we're gonna weld them all around and that's gonna really make a beautiful finish look for the piece but again patience so when this is cooling off let's do the little something there it's missing something right so we're gonna do a pom-pom i don't know how we say this sure but you see what i'm what i'm talking about here we stretch stretch and make some hair oh yeah This stuff are happening here, like ch Chinese noodle. Here we go. Okay, cut it. Tassel, that's why it's a tassel. Okay, and we're not finished. We have to have something that's gonna display the chocolate real nice, like this doesn't look finished. So we are gonna do a nice kind of a little drapery coming out from this cornucopia, which later on will display our beautiful grand crude chocolate truffle. It's after all for national chocolate day so I really wanted to present my chocolate in a very unique way. Boxes, it's great. But sugar cornucopia, it's a little different. There we go. And then I'm gonna go a little bit lower. See I'm going down and then a little lower. It's almost like a wing. If you would do a swan, that would be a beautiful wing. There we go. And then we're gonna curl it. And I love to do this part because you really finish the piece. It's fun. Beautiful. Here we go.
we tilt it a little bit on the front, not too flat. Always give some movement. Go. Fine. Let's do the other side. And we're almost ready to display our chocolates. Now, you put this in the middle of your table and you have it on display. Instead than a flower arrangement, you have this. You serve your beautiful Thanksgiving dinner. This is on display during the whole dinner. And at the end, people enjoy your truffle. You can even do dry fruit, dry apricot, beautiful dry kiwi, all kind of fun stuff. But you see, it's nice, but it's kind of a little blunt, so we're gonna give a little highlight. Now when I do this, I have to stop the fan. I'm just gonna do a little food warmish. A little green fairy dust for the bowl. So we are okay. And I'm going to get my truffle behind. We are going to set it up and we are done. So I have to make sure the sugar is not hot because otherwise I will have a chocolate sauce at the end. So I need to cool off a little bit more. I feel it's warm and when it's cold, we set up the truffle. Now I'm setting up the truffle. The sugar is cold, so it's not gonna melt my delicate, sensible chocolate. And I try to organize with the color that all the color are not all together, that is kind of mixed harmoniously. There we go. We need a little red here. Nice little heart. And the pink all the way up. We need a little dark here. And we are done. Enjoy.